Jesus spoke concerning many false prophets and many antichrists that would come in the last days. He warned extensively about the advent of false Christs and false prophets. However, in the book of Revelation, he tells us of these two beasts, commonly referred to as the Antichrist and the false prophet, although not specifically called that in Revelation chapter 11, who will come at the end of the age. The man of lawlessness, the anthropon a nomon, as Paul calls him, also the son of perdition, as referred to by the Apostle John. There are many people who have been aware of this for some time and spoken and written of the Antichrist. From the time of the Reformation onward, Protestant reformers and those who followed them spoke of the papacy as an Antichrist institution and of popes being Antichrists, some even the Antichrist. But what does the Word of God say about this person and his false prophet, these two beasts coming at the end of the age? Why was this amount of emphasis given if it was not something we were meant to know? There are some who erroneously maintain it doesn't concern us. The church will not be here, that we're going to be raptured before the Antichrist comes, but that seems inconsistent with what Jesus told us. Let he who has wisdom count the number of the beast. If those who have wisdom are the so-called tribulation saints, they wouldn't have wisdom. Because if they did, they wouldn't be here either. They would have been raptured. Something has to be reconciled here. Why are we told to know and count the number of his name? What does that mean? Does it relate to the practice of, of Gematria? Does it relate to something else? The scriptures tell us far more about the Antichrist than most Christians realize. The number 666 occurs multiple places in the scripture, multiple places. And each place it occurs, it indicates something about the man of lawlessness who is to come. Judas Iscariot being another character in point. He and the Antichrist are called the son of perdition with the definite article. Why does the New Testament describe Antichrist as being in the character of Judas? They went out from among us but they were not really of us. Both of them being very much concerned with money and wealth, but the only two people who have ever been satanically possessed, not demon possessed, but Satan possessed, are Judas and the Antichrist. Of Judas, Satan entered him, as will happen with the Antichrist. Why does the number of the beast occur at least twice with backslidden Solomon? What does Solomon teach? about the coming man of lawlessness. There are many, many shadows, types, people who prefigure the Antichrist and false prophet found throughout the text of Scripture. There are the obvious cases from the Apocrypha warned of by the prophet Daniel, such as Antiochus Epiphanes and his successor, Demetrius Soter, and others in addition to them. It's something that many Christians are fascinated with, but few Christians properly understand. How did the early church understand the Antichrist and false prophet? What did the apostles teach people to look out for? What should we be looking out for today? In the book, Shadows of the Beast, we deal with this crucial subject, how the identity of the coming Antichrist will be made known to the faithful church. We are told in 2 Thessalonians that the Episunagage are gathering together to be with Jesus by rapture and resurrection will not happen until the Antichrist comes. As we get closer to that time, many Christians are coming to see this. Even people who had traditionally been pre-tribulational are now, if not amending, certainly redefining their views concerning the Antichrist. Although I disagree with him on many things and I'm not pre-tribulational, Chuck Missler now acknowledges the Antichrist will have to be identified before the rapture takes place. So does Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum. Again, these are people from a pre-tribulational camp of thought concerning the rapture. Even in that camp, people are beginning to realize we need to take 2 Thessalonians quite literally. Well, I've always taken it literally, as have other people in our ministry. It's a question 
that is inescapable. The rapture will not happen until we know who this person is. We must know. How will we know? What does the Word of God tell us? We've dealt with many characters in this book, not the least of which is Herod the Great. Why is the Antichrist so associated with Herod the Great and his image and imagery surrounding him in the book of Revelation chapter 12? Again, most Christians don't think in these terms, but we have a direct link between Daniel and Herod and Herod and Antichrist. It is absolutely vital that Christians begin to think in these terms and understand these things in the matter the early church would have understood them having gotten their doctrine from the apostles. That is what we attempt to do exactly in Shadows of the Beast. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be made known to the faithful Christians in the last days. Shadows of the Beast.